the outset, I must uh, share with you my one great weakness, and that is that I'm not a great orator. And uh, having to speak out to wonderful speakers, uh, I think it's going to be a bit of a you know, ex exercise of patience on your part. Thank you, Professor Bhushan, uh, Rita Ji, uh, Haskati, and uh, Mrs. Sarkpani. It is indeed an honor to be here receiving this award. I am still wondering why I've got it. I haven't been waiting patiently the whole day, trying to figure out, ever since I wrote my first mail uh, to Mr. Joshi asking, but why? Why am I getting this award? And, you know, I think I should just rest my case, wondering why, and just be happy that I've got this award. Um, as an HR professional, what is it that is really expected from each one of us? It's everything that my predecessors have spoken about. But the one thing that really I would like to highlight here and leave with you as a thought is your ability to engage with people. Why did I become an HR uh, professional? By sheer accident. I had seen the principles of HR being practiced even before I'd heard the word or the phrase HR and management. For that I thank my mother who uh, as I was growing up I saw all the sabzi walas, the fruit walas coming first to her and saying BBG, uh, aap please ek kilo ya ek piece kharid lo aap ki yaha se phir aage jayenge to hamara bhala hoega. And I would sit there watching my mother oblige them with maybe half a kilo, or two pieces, whatever it is that she had to buy. And one day I asked her, I said, why do you think they come to you first? What is so special? And her words were, she says, I've seen the way people treat these people. No respect. They talk down to them. So, you know, they just feel good when they come over here. And I just help them out. She was able to engage and connect with them at their level. It wasn't someone who was obliging them, but she felt for them. The other person who helped shape my thinking was Father McGrath. For anyone who's ever heard of uh, any, the institution called Father McGrath, he is the epitome of human resources management. He was a pro he's a professor at uh, XLRI, of course he's now retired. One of the founders of that institution and the shapers of the ideology that was inculcated into us, every single student who went through his hands. I remember Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Father McGrath actually welcoming this busload of first year students onto the campus. He stood there, he ensured that we were all taken care of. A week, he gave us a week to settle into that uh, institute. A week later, he comes up to us and says, what is the name of the guy who comes to clean your room? What is the name of the gardener who services the, you know, does the uh, rose bed outside your hostel? Of course, I had the privilege of having had a friend, my brother's uh, colleague actually, who had passed out of Excel a few years earlier, and he warned me about this. So I was the only one who put up my hand and had all the answers. And he thought that was brilliant. Because he said, if you don't know the people who are working for you and helping you settle into a place, how, we, how do you think you're going to be an HR professional? And that was the day everybody went scurrying around the campus, trying to, and we discovered that every second person there was a Bahadur. <laughs> so it was actually quite easy. If you only said Bahadur does it for us, he'd have been happy. Third person who actually shaped uh, my thinking and my learning and my desire to continue to work in the HR field was uh, Mr. V.S. Mahesh. Basant here is my next colleague, and he too will bear, bear testimony to the fact that Mr. V.S. Mahesh, V.S.M. as we called him, was something out of this world. Brilliant, extremely strategic in his thinking, but he taught us another thing. When we joined, that was when IR was at its peak in the Taj group. But he taught us how to connect with people 
and yet get our work done without them even realizing that we were pushing them to do something that we wanted them to do. As a management trainee, I remember having been um, you know, projected up in front to handle an IR crisis in one of the Taj hotels because the union leader there happened to be a Malayali and I at two am a Malayali and he says if I only want to talk to the management it will be through her. I didn't know the A or the B or the C of IR management but I only knew how to connect with the person. And from one Malu to another Malu, the management managed to get some certain messages through me and got the, you know, we managed to achieve what we had set out to achieve. The fourth institution, and that is Fab India, which is where I've spent the last uh, seven to eight years, is another reason why my belief in HR still continues. Uh, if you ask me what exceptional work I've done there, I will not have an answer to that. But if I have to trace back my eight years in Fab India, all I can say is growing an organization from say 15 stores to 168 today has been no mean task. You can grow. You can grow many, many stores. You can, you know, the length and breadth of the country. But what we managed to maintain is a common culture that existed 52 years ago is the culture that exists today. And if I have to personally pat myself on the back, I would say that is one thing that I think I have been able to contribute to Fab India. It's a highly underplayed organization, so I feel extremely comfortable in that environment because we were never taught to be marketing our own selves or branding our own selves as professionals. But today, uh, we are an organization that is recognized from the outside, and I think that's what. And today's citation, today's award, is another recognition of the fact that I think I am at the right place. I didn't know. My family asked me, my children asked me, Mom, why are they giving it to you? What have you done? And I didn't have an answer. But, you know, sitting here, enjoying every bit of that praise coming, I think it's been a wonderful thing. One thought I would like to leave you with is we grew up in a generation where our fathers worked all their life in one organization. I've changed a few. The longest probably has been eight years. You folks are going to be changing your jobs every now and then. Sometimes because you want to, and sometimes because the organization has asked you to. In such an environment, how prepared are you to handle a situation where you have to tell 200 people, sorry honey, we can't continue with you any longer. And ensure that you don't get mauled outside, ensure that you don't get beaten up outside. That preparedness starts not at the last minute. It starts with you earning your personal credibility, which is something that needs to be worked upon from day go one. If you don't enjoy certain personal levels of, levels of certain personal credibility, believe me, you will never be able to sit across a table and ask a person to put in his papers because the organization cannot afford him anymore. This is the reality of today. And if you go on there thinking that I've got, you know, major degrees and I should be paid X and Y and Z, and then not be able to do that main task, you know, you can hire people, but the toughest job is to when you have to let them go. And that, believe me, comes with you having invested in the ability to engage with people right through. People will not protest, people will not get aggressive, people will not get violent if you connect at a certain level. And they know that you are not out to cheat them, that you are a fair human being. And I think for an HR professional, that is one tag you need to carry. You need to be perceived to be fair, to be sensitive, to be really genuinely concerned, and to be connected with what the person is going through. So think about it, folks. I think that is your greatest challenge going forward. Thank you.